Welcome back. So yes, we're all focusing on, focusing on uh, what you might just saw, community policing. What are the expectations from the authorities and what should they be? How is it going to eventually materialize in terms of operationalizing all of this? What kind of results will we expect at the end of the day? So these are some of the issues that our guests will be Addressing this morning, we've got uh, Gava Show, who is the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, joining us from our studios in Abuja. We also do have sitting beside him, Honorable Rima Shaul, who is the former Chairman House Committee on the Army. Gentlemen, good morning, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Chamberlains. All right, let me start with you, uh, uh, Mr. Show. Now, yes, the 13 billion has been approved for the purposes of community policing, but even before the IG spoke and afterwards, many still trying to wrap their heads around what do we expect. Now, on the part of the authorities having approved that, what do they have in mind in terms of the time frame, the structure, when this will kick in and begin to get them results? What's the thinking of government in that light? Well, I think, thank you for giving us this opportunity. And to say that uh, uh, the country has been talking about the need for uh, state policing, community policing, you know, the language are changing from time to time. Finally, we are here and uh, it has uh, taken off. Uh, the essence of the government funding at this time is to do two or three things. One is to ensure training, you know, for, for those who are to be recruited to join the uh, service. Uh, and two, to enlighten the public about the functionality of the new system. And three, to procure equipment. But uh, again, uh, above all of these things also is the need to streamline you know, the, the, the processes as embarked upon by the various states and, uh, and sub-regions of the country. It is essentially a police uh, activity. It is uh, under the police force of the Federation. It will supervise it. It has set up the structure. Your report has just report, uh, indicated this. The IG has outlined the structure for it. This will bring everyone in line with what the police uh, aspires to have on the ground as as, as community uh, police. Uh, so uh, obviously the gains are, are, are pretty obvious. Uh, when we know, we, as members of the community, we know ourselves better. Uh, we know all the nooks, the crannies. We know who is who. Uh, and so therefore, uh, it, it is not difficult for you know, intelligence to be supplied you know, for effective uh, law and order uh, management in, in our own communities. Yeah. Mr. Chair, some would wonder, you know, why it is taking us so long. Well, granted, you have said, I mean, we've been talking about it for some time and we are here now. This was first broached in 2002, uh, March precisely, when some conversations began. Some people were even trained to begin what they call community policing uh, uh, development, training others who would also be involved in this. Uh, just so we do not re, re go back into you know, the, where we were before, what do you think were the reasons why we had such 18-year delay until we got to this point so we don't go back there? Well, uh, I will merely speculate because I can only speak for why it has taken the Buhari administration uh, as much time to come to this point. But I think that on the overall, uh, the, the history of uh, state or community polling, uh, police in the country has been well documented. Going back uh, to the First Republic, it is clear that uh, native authority police that we had then uh, was, uh, was merely an instrument for the oppression of uh, people who are opposed, you know, to, to, to the powers that be, whether at the native authority level or at the regional level. The country's experience, 
was was a horrid one indeed and it is not surprising therefore that uh, regional police was abolished for a national police because uh, and and the, 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 that uh, of course had helped to ensure a proper management and control and the abuse to which the police had become subject uh, for president muhammad buhari his concern had uh, always been about um, the spread and the misuse of weapons uh, in, in, in the hands of police. Uh, he said it repeatedly that, uh, look, a lot of the states that had clamored for state police, many of them were unable to cope with the salary payments. If you, put, if you hire a community policeman and give him a gun, and keep him for five, six months without salary, what do you expect? So I, I think that uh, efforts all this time had been taken to ensure that uh, uh, situations of this sort uh, did not arise. Uh, and so therefore they need to streamline and ensure that uh, there is a standard national procedure uh, and prescription for each of the states to, to, to abide, to, to comply with. Okay, let's bring in Honorable Shaolu on this matter. I mean, yes, you've heard from Mr. Shu, and then the IGP has also given some indication as to how some of these things may turn out. Does this dwarf all of those arguments about state police since community policing, uh, the funds have been released for it now? I beg your pardon, approved, not released <laughs> yet. Actually, we'll come to Mr. Shu on that. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Charlie. Actually, the, for me, it's like a child is looking for uh, something. It's looking for, uh, let me use the modern uh, technology, it's looking for a, 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 a car to ride. Then you come and give the child a toy. I don't think that toy is going to solve any problem. It's not going to change the agitations. The community policing, as... Uh, as we know, cannot solve the problem, cannot answer the questions that were raised by people who are agitating for state policing. Now, I, Nigeria is about the only, one of the few places on the surface of the earth today uh, that has what you have one person, the IGP, controlling over 350 people a uh, thousand people who are under his command. The United Kingdom that brought, created the police for us has moved away from that. You don't have a situation where you have one IGP uh, sitting in Abuja controlling what is happening in faraway uh, places. We have developed, the world has developed uh, in a way that we have uh, Groups of, we have, uh, the country has been divided in our case into states, into local governments. And of course, people are agitating that in these local governments, in these states, you should have a situation where the people are able to uh, have a say in their security. Now, uh, my friend and colleague, former colleague, uh, Garuba alluded to the, what happened in the First Republic. I'm just re releasing the second edition of my book, The Story of Gambo Sawaba. Uh, this woman was jailed 16 times by the native police. And she was jailed, and some of the reasons for which she was jailed were as simple as going to campaign that the NEPU, the party which she belonged to, uh, should be allowed some things. We also had a situation where uh, uh, the native police insisted that if you are going for a rally, you, cannot, you could not criticize the government. So there were a lot of abuses that led to uh, uh, the formation and strengthening of the federal police system that we have it. And indeed, it is now the only police system that we have in the country. Unfortunately, it has failed. The fact that you have vigilantes emerging the fact that you even have had it today, we have the creation of the Civil Defense Corps. Uh, the fact that we even, the National Assembly successfully passed a bill to create uh, uh, another body. And we've had every, almost every community you had vigilante groups emerging show that the police 
control from the federal government at the rate which is, is being controlled cannot solve the problems of policing in the country. And I do not think that any form of federal community policing, any form of community, uh, policing that is uh, controlled from Abuja can solve the problem of uh, the, the, the can solve the problem of com of crime in the communities. I believe that what we should do at the federal level is to uh, work on a, a regulatory framework, a procedure for how the states and various communities can protect themselves. And I think time has come, in my own opinion, that we need to deconstruct the Nigerian police. What do I mean by deconstructing the Nigerian police? The Nigerian police is too big to succeed. It cannot succeed. It has not succeeded in the past, and it, is, it has no chance of succeeding now because the problems are increasing, and the funding available for the police is not much. I do agree, and I shudder at the prospects of having a governor, for instance, in Nigeria, without a strong state house of assembly controlling a strong judiciary, creating and controlling the police. You can just imagine the, 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 the type of oppression that will take place in those states. In the same manner, you, uh, you agree with me completely that we all do know today that local government elections do not, are not conducted in the country. The states simply, the states simply write out results. And so if you now allow a situation where the governors without an independent legislature in the state, a truly independent judiciary in the state, if you allow state governors to have uh, men under arms that they are controlling, apart from the danger that they cannot pay their salary, you are going to have a situation where uh, a crime is going to be multiplied in the country. So I think our role at the federal level would have been, in my opinion, to create a regulatory framework to bring a legislation to the National Assembly, a framework for community policing to be conducted and to allow room for states, this may require constitutional amendments, allow room for states to create the type of forces that they need to create and the types of crime and responsibilities that they can uh, effectively uh, have oversight uh, of. Today, if you go to the United States, for instance, in, in America, you do not have a state police controlling just everything, just anything that comes to their, to their way. There are things that they cannot do. So if we create a regulatory framework and allow the states to do some things, we might be comfortable after we allow an independent a, a legislature to exist in the states, because presently they do not exist in the state as far as I'm concerned. Mm. For most well, of the states, they do not exist. You may uh, want to, uh, to explain that a little that further, uh, Honorable Shaul, because on the one hand, you are saying we need state police. On the other hand, you are saying we are not ready for it, that the governors are going to control it. And then you are saying that we need a, a regulatory framework where the state police is going to be responsive and then the legislature needs to be independent. So what exactly are you saying? We're not ready for the state police or we should just go with what we have now and then develop into it later? Uh, under the present system that we have, it is my opinion, under the system that we have today, it is my opinion that if you uh, allow the state governors, for instance, to create a force that they arm, you are going to have the same thing that uh, happens when local government elections are, uh, are conducted, happen uh, uh, in terms of security, and that will be very dangerous for the country. That is one. Number two, uh, the point that is related is that we cannot continue to maintain a, an omnibus big, and in my opinion, so big that it is prone to failure, a police system that somebody in far away by Elsa, his, his fate is decided here in Abuja, that uh, anything, can, that cannot work. It has not worked in most parts of the world, and the world has moved away from there. If you go to uh, Germany, for instance, they have a different police system where states uh, uh, have their police, and there are they have specific regulations as to what they can do and what they cannot do. If you go to the, even the United Kingdom, where we borrowed our system from, 
uh, our colonial system emerged from. We have uh, what they call constabularies. And uh, the constabulary uh, chief, uh, the chief constable, answers to the, the, the minister, uh, who is a member of parliament. And he does not answer. You cannot, you, you don't sit in London and decide what happens in Leicester, for instance. The police in Leicester are the ones that determine what happens there. So, but here we have a system that a small criminal case in faraway Taraba sometimes will have to come to Abuja for determination. That cannot work. And of course, the truth of the matter is that our police numbers are too few. We have too few police on the street. From you in the and moment, but let me go that. to Mr. Shew. Uh, Just hang on, Mr. Shew. Just hang on a minute. Uh, Mr. Shew, before you respond to what he's saying, I mean, at some point I was asking, saying the funds had been released. So could you speak to that? Has the funds been released or what's the plan for that before you respond to his comments? No, I'm not uh, following up on that uh, issue. Uh, okay. Announcement was made last week. Uh, I'm not in a position to say whether the money is uh, released or not at this time. Okay, go ahead and respond to what but, he says uh, then. To, well, I, I think that, uh, 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 well, I hope, well, let me first of all say that uh, I hope my friend, we've been practicing as journalists with the RIMA for many years, and he was a very troublesome NUJ person, so I can understand where he's coming from. But let me, I, I think that, and I hope that the policeman, I'm the policeman who accompanied him to this studio, did not hear his uh, condemnation of the, the right of, of the entire police force. They, they're doing their best for the country, and I think that they need encouragement. My response to it, to what he has said, is that I think largely he agrees that there has been abuse. He's even disclosed that he's written a book on the past abuse of the regional police in the country. We can talk about Germany and UK and America, but each country has its own history. In our own case, we all also have our own country. We had had this uh, policing, local policing in the past. It was abused. And not only that, this is a country that had experienced, had experience with very powerful regions in the past, to the point that the regions had threatened the center. They had threatened, actually, the unity of the country, the continued existence of the country as one. And so, therefore, I think when people are trying to be careful and find that there is a very powerful center controlling the police, the understanding is that, that this is proceeding from our history and it is not isolated from our past experiences. Okay, well, I think Magba is also here. She's got some questions for you. Magba, go ahead. Indeed, I do have questions for um, Mr. Garba Shehu. Looking at what transpired last year when community policing was introduced, there was a bit of controversy. Uh, we saw what happened in the Southwest, the Southwest governors coming together to form Amotekun. And then, you know, the uh, ensuing controversy about whether or not that was backed by law. Eventually, we did see a legal framework come out of that. We saw governors in the Southeast as well come up with uh, suggestions in terms of how to go about community policing, which seem to generate some controversy with policing or with police authorities at the national level. Uh, the the, the uh, IG of police was going up and down quite a bit to try and resolve the differences. Do we now have a framework of sorts that has been approved, uh, you know, given the understanding now that 13 billion naira has been released uh, for community policing to happen across the 36 states of the Federation. Yes, you are right, Maupi. It's, uh, it is, it is, whatever name they go by, Amotekun or whatever, uh, they will be streamlined and they will be run in accordance with the st structure as defined by the Inspector General of Police. They will be localized, they will be owned by local communities, they will be run, managed by them, uh, you know, the constitution of the committees has, has, has been defined as including, uh, you know, council chairmen, traditional rulers, uh, uh, religious leaders, uh, uh, civil society groups, and all of that. So you're going to have a single type structure of community policing 
permitted all across the country. And whatever is not in line with this uh, does not have a place in the new scheme of things. And that's uh, my understanding. Uh, you know, potential problems that could arise from that, given that community policing is supposed to be unique uh, to the community and should, you know, you, it cannot be a one size fits all because communities are different and, you know, might prefer to be policed differently or might do, come up with different. See any potential conflict coming out of that? Well, uh, I, I don't think there will be any conflict because uh, in all of our states and the local councils, because that is the order of uh, the structure, the, the structural order of the policing, there will be state uh, committees, there will be local council communities, and there will be local community uh, uh, settings. I, I think that uh, if, if there is a conflict, it will be with uh, some initial perceptions that some grouping of states uh, can put together uh, you know armed policemen on a regional scale uh, that 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 i believe has not a, a place in the new scheme of things hmm. all right gentlemen let's go to break uh, we'll come back and continue this conversation in a moment please stay with us All right, welcome back. Well, Mr. Shio, could you just clarify? Did you say that uh, all of those regional security outfits, for instance, Amotekun, that has been established and backed by law in the southwest states, will all be streamlined? As a result, they will not function as Amotekun, but they will streamline themselves into community policing. Is that your point? Nomenclature can, can just, uh, they can choose their own nomenclature. It, it doesn't make a difference. But uh, structurally, there is a governance structure for all state uh, uh, and local council community policing mechanisms. And this should abide in all of the states. Uh, and uh, mind you also that even in the case of Amotekon, there is no, there is no law that is regionally binding on the mechanism put in place. Each state parliament put together their own legislation, legislation. Yes, there were similarities in so many ways, but the fact, you don't take away the fact that each state, Amotekun, is an initiative of a given state in the Southwest. Well, let me take this to Honorable Shaolu, and perhaps, you know, in the same vein. Uh, members of the National Assembly come from different states, uh, House of Assembly, House of Representatives, and uh, the National the Senate. Each one of you have come from different states with peculiar security challenges, and you have said that the issues of security is so peculiar to the localities that governing the police from the central is perhaps asking for a little too much. Is there anything or any kind of conversation among members of the National Assembly over the years or even in this Ninth Assembly to say, you know what, let's do something about this? Any conversation along that line? Uh, well, the first thing I want to say before I respond to you that I think eventually this law, uh, the, whatever regulations the IGP has made, by law, is supposed to go to National Assembly for ratification. Uh, by the spirit and letter of our constitution, the IGP cannot go and make laws. So whatever the IGP instructions the IGP is giving to the states will have problems. What if those instructions that the IGP is giving conflict with the, uh, the regulations, that the, the laws made by the state houses of assembly? I think we need to solve this problem in a holistic matter manner and that is first to amend the constitution uh to in my opinion to deconstruct i know there are several uh, there have been several initiatives including creating a police trust fund and so forth and there are several amendments that have been proposed there are still amendments that are being worked on part of which is to uh, deconstruct the police in such a way that uh, uh, the police can function uh, for, it can be very functional and uh, we can achieve results. 
Uh, now the go issue to the, of... Uh, just one moment, just one uh, moment, before you go to that, to the issue and the other issues that you have raised. Now, you said that there is a need for the IG to bring whatever it is that's going to guide the operationalization of the community policing to the National Assembly. Well, some may even wonder why that is, since it's just regulations for a law that already exists. Plus, you remember that there is a small committee of the National Economic Council set up to champion the operationalization of this, which is made up of the IG, the Governor's Forum Chairman, um, the Minister of Finance, and one other person. Isn't that something that, you know, would subsist? Well, uh, uh, I wish my friend uh, Garuba were sitting where I'm sitting. You know, we're in the era of uh, alternative facts. We're in the era where anything goes. People say why, 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 what they want. You will recall that there was a time that money was taken out of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, what, excess crude account before. He, he, the matter was brought to the National Assembly. That can only happen. That is also one of the weaknesses that we have in our system. You cannot go and make a rule and implement it before you come to... Uh, it's it's com completely out of context, not correct. The, uh, the fact that the president, or the president, or uh, even if it were the president, makes a pronouncement does not translate that into a law. It has to be brought for the proper thing to be done before you operationalize it. And I think that uh, doing this thing without proper discussion and much discussion is going to create problems. I want to tell you upfront before we go further that as far as I'm concerned, first of all, we need to do amendments to the constitution uh, and create the conditions. I do know as a matter of fact that we I, uh, we came from the era of abuse of state police, original police, and of uh, native authority police. But we cannot remain in that because the same abuses that took place in the native police and the regional police today take place at the national level. That's why the states yeah. are complaining. That's why we created the civil defense. That's why we wanted to create the Peace Corps. That's why we even have vigilante uh, bill before the National Assembly. They are all signs of the fact that we need to look at this system holistically. And yeah, I uh, think that if we just go ahead yeah. to paper it, because this is just responding to the frustration of the state governors. And okay, the, let, the, let me the jump group. in at it's that not point. the southwestern states. Yeah, let me ask you then, because, I mean, yes, these issues are there, but we all remember that when this matter came to the National Assembly, it fell through. They didn't see reason why they should amend the laws to allow for state policing. No, the, that, that's what I'm saying. The, the National Assembly, uh, the, constitutional, um, the, the, the issue of constitutional amendments is not what National Assembly per se can do. You need to build a national consensus around it to be able to amend the constitution because you require uh, 240 members of the House of Representatives and 24 state houses of assemblies. And we do know that the state houses of assemblies, how they are controlled. So the national, the fact that it failed before does not mean that we cannot uh, go ahead to do it. And the point I was trying to make is that we need to build systems before, because the, the response, the idea of having community policing as a response to the agitations for state police cannot, cannot remove the agitations. The agitations will continue. And we don't need to have the tension that we are, about, or that we are going to generate. What we need to do is to look at our laws, look at where we have failed, and see how we can amend them. One of the challenges that we have, I do agree that... Uh, uh, we have, the police ha may have done the work that it needs to do. And I've also, uh, on the floor of the house, I have uh, had the, uh, the chance to point out the fact that we are one of the most under police countries in the world. There are, the, the, the ratio of police to the civil population is one of the lowest in the world. For a country that is in the type of crisis that we have, we don't need to have that. And I also think that if you are throwing 13 billion, that 13 billion, what is it going to do? How many vehicles will it buy? 
how many uh, radio radio uh, are, 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 are you going to have? How about the personnel that that, uh, uh, that you need to recruit to do this work? So we are not looking at this problem holistically. We are looking at it piecemeal. And I think my opinion is that the the community policing is a response to agitations for state police, and it's not a good response. We need to sit down walk through this, think through this, and we need to do the appropriate constitutional amendments. For okay, instance, let's... we can have traffic police that does not report to the IGP. We can have a, 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 a police on serious crime that reports to the serious crime office, does that work. We have police that do different types of things, that report to different types of... So you have more efficiency, like it happens in other countries. We cannot say that we cannot copy other countries because even the clothes and the watch, the expensive wristwatch that my friend is wearing there, he was not made in Nigeria. If you can, if you wear, if you wear a watch that is not made in Nigeria, where will you want not copy a good practice from other parts of? If they have succeeded, if what they are doing is good, why can't we copy them? Instead of saying that we're, we're unique, we cannot copy and we keep doing things in the wrong way. I think we should wake up and do things properly. That is my point. Even though we couldn't see Mr. Show's hand from here, but <laughs> you just spoke about. But let's bring in Mark <laughs> on this. Or Mark has got some questions as well. Indeed, I do have questions for Mr. Garbashehu and also Honorable Shawulu. Now, um, Mr. Shehu, you have said that the regional nature of this, uh, of this, con of this, uh, of Amateko in the southwest, could be a source of conflict, even though you've also made it quite clear uh, that states did pass legislation on a state-by-state -state basis. It will seem that not everyone is convinced uh, that this structure as uh, set up by the Southwest governors is not regional, even though they have made the point over and over again that it's not meant to be regional. What they're saying is that they do not want criminals to be able to escape from one state and get away in another. Uh, what sources of conflict do you think could arise from that arrangement, one? And then the second is, I mean, rising, uh, we're raising issues from Honorable Shawulu's submissions about the 13 billion naira. What precisely is that money meant for? OK, I, I think that. Uh... As the way things, uh, let me first of all say that actually I'm wearing a plastic watch, so it's not uh, the type that parliamentarians are used. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> the, the thing is, I, I'm not sure that, that this thing has been well thought out because, as you can see, the pronouncements on the funding from the center actually was made by the office of the vice president who presides over the National Economic Council made up of the governors. So governors are carried along in all of these things. And there's a full understanding that this is the way to go. So I think that uh, perceived uh, issues of conflict have been you know, put as, I think they, they, are, they are all behind them and the country is ready to move on with the thing. The important thing I, I like to stress is that it may not be exactly as some people want it, but this is a good starting point because it, the thing is, even if you set up state police, and state police conducts itself in the same manner as the federal police now does, as, as a government force without, uh, without the participation and the involvement and recruitment of popular participation. It, it cannot take you anywhere. So this goes to the root of really the problem of the establishing cooperation and the, and, the, and, the, and the community stakeholdership in matters of intelligence gathering and law enforcement. Ownership is supposed to be by communities, by local council, by the, by the states. Yes, it is a response to agitation for state uh, police, but then it is the answer that we now have, given all of the experiences that we have in the country. What is that money to be used for? I said earlier on, it will be used for training, it will be used for public enlightenment and uh, equipment. Have we decided how it's going to be disbursed? 
uh, I think that the, there is a committee of the National Economic Council working with the Inspector General of Police and the, and the Minister of Police Affairs. They, they will decide how this will go. Uh, are you afraid that as, uh, states are based on political lean may not? Uh, I don't think this is the way the, the, the system works. Uh, well, let me quickly go to Honorable that, Shaulu. Um, um, Honorable Shaulu, you have emphasized how important it is. Sorry, how important it is for this to come to the National Assembly for legislation. However, there are fears uh, that this, this talks or you know all of the talks should have happened before this money was approved. Now that monies have been approved, do you think that we could still have a dispassionate look? at creating a framework, a legal framework for community policing? Yeah, there, there always been need. Uh, you know, even when uh, the one billion dollars was taken from the excess crude account, a bill still had to come to the National Assembly. Uh, so eventually that discussion is, will, will, will take place, I believe. However, I think that uh, if we look at what is happening uh, in the country as regards uh, this issue of our security. Uh, my opinion is that we are not looking at our security very holistically. And we'll, have, we'll keep having the type of challenges that we have. We're looking at it piecemeal as a response to agitations for state police. But you know that it's not just the southwestern states that created those ones. I, re I remember River State created, they were stopped. Uh, Benue did, Taraba did, they were all disbanded. Now, the question you will ask, are these state, can these state governors now resurrect what they were doing? And how do these ones uh, interface with the new structure that are coming? All these complications can only, can only be resolved by having proper amendment to the constitution, and secondly, proper amendment to the police act. Uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the, uh, it is necessary to do these things. We are so fond of doing things before we think about them in this country. Uh, there is a funny story that we imported turbines to generate electricity, and the turbines were, we did not consider the fact that they could not be, we had no bridges, no roads that could transport them to where they were supposed to be. And it's because we are doing things in silos. Everybody does his own thing. If you go to countries that have developed, countries that are advancing, countries that are stable, most things that are done are properly discussed. They take years. There's full discussions. Full discussions take place. All issues are attended to. All parameters and uh, possible side effects of those issues are, are brought up and they are discussed before certain decisions are taken. And so countries can afford to take Which decisions I'm that are to you now. Do you think that that discussion is hurry. still possible? Uh, can we still hold it dispassionately? It because is, some people might say, to... oh, now that 13 billion naira has been approved, what a number of legislators will be looking to do is ensure that their states get the fair share. Uh, because we're still living in a sharing economy, you know, to ensure that what is due to their states and their constituencies come to their constituencies rather than focusing on the real matter of security, do you think that we can still hold that discussion or there will be a hurry to quickly, you know, pass this, you know, let's do this quickly so that the monies can be disbursed? Do you think that's what's going to happen? Or do you fear that that could happen? My sister, my sister, that seems to be a very big blow below, below the belt for us in the, in the National Assembly. I think we still hold a dispassionate discussion. I don't think that, uh, I even think, my own opinion, that 13 billion naira is really nothing for security challenges that we have. 13 billion is too small. It cannot do much. So anyone struggling to get a share of the 13 billion, I think, uh, really does not understand. The dispassionate discussions would need to be held. And I don't think that 13 billion naira is so big amount of money that uh, states will be fighting over. If you have to share 13 billion among the states, no state is going to get more than 300 million naira. 300 million, are you going to rent the office? What are you going to do with it? That was my point from the beginning, that we need to do this properly so that we can now come up with a budgetary framework to support whatever is happening at the state level. There are many places that you go in this country today that we don't have policemen. 
or that you are looking for police you don't have, they, if, especially in the rural communities. You go to a community, you discover that just uh, five or so uh, policemen taking care of a large area. And that's why I said we need more funding, funding to improve the manpower and to improve the training. And uh, just 13 billion uh, on a framework. But if we are using that money on creating the framework, I think it's good money spent. But we need to create the framework on how this can work. Um, let me take this to oh, um, Mr. Garbashehu. One of the issues that a number of people have raised over the years has been that of funding. And yes, just as uh, we all know, and uh, Mr. Honorable Shaolu just mentioned, is the fact that you know, money has been approved, but then is the issue of release. Over the past uh, five years or thereabout, we have seen that, well, quite a chunk of money allocated or budgeted for the police is hardly ever released. To a large extent, we'll see that something in the region of um, between 50 and 60%, or sometimes even less, uh, is released for them. So. In, the, in that context, if this project is going to succeed, definitely funding will pay, play a major role. What's the assurance we have or we can get that whatever funds allocated for the police, both for this project and other projects, the, the, their regular job, is going to be released 100% so that they can do their jobs as effectively as expected? Well, you know that uh, we are a country w with uh, serious challenges. Uh, look, the police uh, are contending for funds along with the, all the others, the universities, uh, the army, uh, you know, uh, social welfare, sports. Everyone is taken from the same basket. And when, when there is a positive, when there is a shortage, uh, then the shortage will obviously have to go around. But you can see that actually one of the key agreements for the state community policy is, all, is the issue of the ownership itself. So the communities will not own the police mechanism in their own communities. And I'm saying so that they have nothing to contribute. In any case, there's a lot of support, community support in many areas going on in the country where people come together and they procure buildings and the motor vehicles and, and so many things for the police. The, the, there isn't enough money from the center to fund all of these things. And this is why the, the idea of a, a police a trust, trust fund was also uh, actioned by the federal government. It is now in place. Uh, so funding will come not only from the appropriation by the National Assembly at the center for the police, what, for the trust fund is there, but communities must actively be involved. It, it's already happening in, in many areas. Look at some of the industrial zones, say in Lagos, for instance. You find that uh, police stations located in some of those areas are well endowed They're because communities around them, they realize how important it is that they have effective policing. And they don't wait for the government to provide. I think this is what uh, the community policing will do for the entire country. All right, then, uh, gentlemen, we we'll have to thank you both for coming on. Uh, Gaba Show, Senior Special Assistant to the Media, to the President on Media and Publicity, as well as uh, Honorable Rima Shaul, who is the former Chairman House Committee on Army Services. Even though Honorable Shaul, we didn't quite get what you meant when you thought, Mr. Shaul, you wish he would share seat with you. Are you indirectly asking him to share seats with you in the National Assembly eventually? In that, uh, if if Shehu were in the, a member of the PDP, <laughs> I, I believe that now the country will be on fire because uh, I know him. We are in the media together. Uh, he is now speaking uh, very selectively. He has selective amnesia. He chooses what is good and what is no good. <laughs> so maybe when he writes his memoirs, we'll know the truth of everything. <laughs> All right, then. We'll look forward to that and see what happens. Thank you, gentlemen, for talking to us. We're back in a moment. Stay with us.